Feels premium, actually. Power button, volume up, volume down. We got the SIM card tray right here, USB-C. Uh, I don't know what that's for. I don't know. That's probably for the speaker, I imagine. And we have the camera bump. And it looks... It has that iPhone look, actually. You got a USB-C to USB-C. The SIM card tray. And then we have some instructions manuals. All right, so after I set up the phone, I put a screen protector on it, I put it inside a case, and we're going to test out how well the screen unlock actually works with the thumb. And you guys could see for the most part, it does a really good job. It's not perfect because there were a couple instances where I wouldn't read it, uh, but for the most part it is, so that was an instance right there. Uh, but for the most part, it's really, really good. And, and most of the time I'm gonna use the phone like this with one hand. And yeah. I still think the older Pixels, which one was it? The Pixel 3 and before, where they had the fingerprint right here. I still think that was the absolute best place to put it um, because you could just grab the phone, tap it like this and it unlocks and it was amazing. And that would work 99.99% .99 of the time. Um, this one works pretty well, but I think for comfort wise, it's just more comfortable for it to be here. Anyways, it hasn't been there for many, many years. I don't think it's probably gonna go back based on the trend that I'm seeing. Uh, but let's talk about the phone. Okay, so as you would expect, it is a very smooth phone, um, just like any modern Android phone would be, especially a premium flagship one like the Pixel. And uh, so let's go over a few of the cool things that this phone has. So the first thing, the biggest thing about the Pixel is that they have really good cameras. So I actually earlier I took a picture of this and you could see that the Nighthawk is blurred. Uh, it's not uh, it's not perfect. I mean, it's not like uber blurred or anything, but it is kind of blurry. So they have this option that if you actually click on edit, there's an unblur option. And if I tap unblur, it takes a second and it does a really, really good job of unblurring Nighthawk. So you could see it's a lot more clear now uh, than what it used to be. So it used to be like that, and now it's like this. So that is pretty cool. Um, you guys saw the magic eraser and stuff and earlier pixels and everything like that, but this, is, this was like the main thing that I really, really found useful um, on this that was actually pretty cool. Talk about the camera just a bit. So basically you still have your macro photography right here as you guys could see. Um, you have night sight which is taking pictures in a darker area without flash, panorama, uh, portrait. Add me which is something new that I hadn't seen before that I think they announced during the reveal. Um, but basically, this is something where you take a picture, you leave enough space for yourself, and then someone comes and takes a picture where you're standing there, and it makes it into one picture. Long exposure, and then action pan was also something that I hadn't seen, where, let's say, the example they show is that if you're trying to take a picture of a train, you're following it, and then it kind of blurs the background and focuses on the train. And then for video, you know, you have some different options and stuff, night type, uh, time lapse, slow motion, uh, and then in case you guys are wondering, it does support up to 8K 30 frames per second. They can also do 4K at 60 frames per second as well. So we're going to play back one of my most recent videos because it has an audio playing in the background so we could test out the audio as well. So the speakers, just so you guys could hear um, kind of what it sounds like and just so you guys could see the video quality as well. So this is on Tesla's FSD 12.5.2. Okay, so obviously you have the zoom and the original and the audio quality sounds normal. It's not, oh, this, these are the best speakers in the world. Um, but for a phone, it's decently loud and it sounds pretty normal. At the highest volumes, you know, it starts to get a bit distorted, but 
it's fine for a phone. This is really one of the times that the phones had really good speakers was, was it the HTC One? I forget the name of it, but it had the front facing speakers. Those were pretty good for phone speakers. These now come from the bottom and it's fine. It does the job. So we're doing a test to see how well this thing picks up my voice. So I went to go get a hamburger and I ate it and it was delicious. Period. What day is it today? So it automatically punctuates for you as well. Granted, it overwrote that for some odd reason. Period. Go to the next line. See, it even does that which is really, really good. So overall, the speech to text on this thing is very, very good. It's pretty much, it's probably the best um, as of now that recognizes your speech. It does a really good job with it. So I brought my other three phones and we'll wrap up the video, just do a quick comparison. So in terms of size and shape, as you guys could see, the Pixel is the closest to the iPhone. Uh, these two are different. So we got the iPhone 15 Pro Max, the OnePlus 12, and the Galaxy S24 Ultra. Uh, one really good thing about the Pixel is if you're on the if if you put this on a desk with the iPhone, it can move if you touch this area. With the Pixel, it's super super stable. With the OnePlus 12, it also can move if you push it here. Uh, and because of the case, the Galaxy is completely flat. So it's very very good from that. But without the case. The Pixel would be the most ideal because this thing is centered, their camera signature look, and I really, really like the way that looks. Um, but in a nutshell, the Pixel is a premium phone. Speech text is really good, camera features are really good, especially the AI features after, and I really like the fact that you get Android update first. There's a lot of also built-in stuff when you're calling, it, it, it does spam blocking, and it can answer automatically for you that they've had on the Pixels for quite some time now. Um, but it's a very good, clean phone. And if you guys are wondering, with Wi-Fi 7, I actually did a separate video comparing the Wi-Fi 7 speed test of the Pixel to the OnePlus 12. So if you guys are interested, you guys feel free to check that video out. Um, but with that, let me know what you guys think in the comment sections below. And I'm also curious to know which one of these four is your favorite phone and which one do you guys think is my favorite phone from these four. Anyways, thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.